I'm a, I'm a trainer uh, here at Stromquist. Uh, I do the pneumatic training, the variable air volume training, and the boiler training for the Stromquist group. I'm here to explain how the Johnson 3300-1 controller uh, is calibrated. Okay, I removed the cover, which requires this Allen wrench to get this set point dial off this, all right? You have to put the Allen wrench in. If you notice from the inside here, after you get it in there, you have to line that Allen up with an Allen screw on the inside and turn it counterclockwise to get it off, okay? And that allows the cover off, and then you press these two pieces from the outside. These two clips hold the metal head on the top of the, of the thermostat, okay? So you press those, you can actually press it with your thumbs and pull this piece off. And I have the set point dial and the cover off. Looking underneath here, I'm going to use this screwdriver for my pointer right here, this high piece right here, there's a screw down inside. That's the direct acting screw, calibration screw. The reverse acting calibration screw is looking down to your right. Down here is a screw that's a little lower than this, right to the my left or your right. Turn that screw. Uh, that's the screw for the reverse acting, if this stat is reverse acting. Now, reverse and direct action is controlled on this unit. This is a dash one, a 3300-1. That means a 15 pound supply pressure coming in. The air will come in and go to the direct acting side of the thermostat. That means that it's coming up underneath this screw and the bleed port. And this screw that I've got my screwdriver sitting in right now is the calibration screw when we're direct acting. When we're, that means we have hot water in the system or we're heating mode. When we're reverse acting, uh, that means that as the sense temperature increases above the set point of this bulb, that the output pressure will decrease. Direct acting as the sense temperature goes above set point on the, the, the controller of the thermostat, that the output pressure would, would uh, if temperature drops, pressure drops, temperature increases output pressure increases to this control device. This is just an old damper actuator we got. And instead of using the hypodermic needle, which fits right into this port, we've used an inline gauge. It's easier for you to see on the video, all right? So you would be using a hypodermic right here to get the pressure reading off of this. When this comes out of the box, you hook this all up and there'll be zero pounds pressure on a brand new one. So when you hook it up to operate uh, whatever it is you're controlling with this, you have to, first of all, put the pressure you want to. Now, let's say that you've got direct acting pressure, which we have on this unit right now. We have 15 pounds of supply pressure coming into the thermostat, and I have adjusted this stat. I don't know if you can see this gauge or not, but we're at about six pounds. So I'm going to, I'm going to chew my head. I'm going to sit over here, and I'm going to look at this so that I can increase this pressure to about mid-spring. We have determined that this is a five pound to ten pound spring on this actuator, your, your mid-spring is going to be whatever it is you're controlling, okay? Mid-spring of whatever you're controlling. Halfway between heating and cooling, how does that sound? Okay? So we've determined this to be a five to ten pound spring. We had five and ten together. This fifteen divided by two is seven and a half pounds is my calibration pressure on this thermostat running that actuator, okay? So I got this, I don't know if you notice that, it's at seven and a half pounds, now it's gone above seven and a half pounds, it's very touchy. Okay, so I'm going to look in here with my head again, excuse my head, get in the slot, and I'm going to turn this down a little bit. There it dropped down to about seven and a half pounds. And now, the, the mid-spring, I've adjusted the mid-spring. Now, to set this, you have to put this cover back on, all right? Uh, it would fit just like this. These, these little slots fit right in this little clip here. There's another slot on the other side. Right in the right spot? Yeah, I, I got it wrong, I'm sorry. It has to go over here. <laughs> this has to go out where the capillary comes out of here. So I fit that over the top and snap it in place. And then to put the screw, or the, cat, the warmer cooler dial back on. Now, this is where things get a little bit hairy. Johnson's got warmer cooler they always have had on this unit for 50 years. 
Um, this, when you're right in the middle between the warmer, cooler arrow, you're pointing at this little arrow right here, the a marker on the outside of this cover. So I want to put this on and sell it so that it would be sitting right here in normal condition. But if it's warmer than what I want, let's say I calibrate this and that's why I'm there. Maybe it's too warm or too cold, whatever. Let's say it's too warm and let's say it's uh, 75 degrees in there, all right? What you have to do is remember that right between this mark, right where this is ultimately going to be set at, that's whatever I want to maintain my temperature at. So if I want to maintain 72 and it's 75, what I have to do, each increment on this dial is one degree of pressure. Okay, one degree. So I say, all right, if what I want is 72 and it's 75, I'm going to go toward the warmer side here. I'm going to say, all right, I want 72 and it's 73, 74, 75. So when I put this dial on, I, I'm, I'm setting it at 70, excuse me, I'll set it at 70, the mark that means 75 degrees, tighten the screw down with the Allen wrench under the stud, and then turn it to what I want, 75 degrees, or 72 degrees, excuse me. It is 75, I calibrated at 75, but I want 72. And so you then after you install that cap back on, you turn it back off, until you're right in the middle between the warmer, cooler arrows, and you've now got it set three degrees cooler than what it was, you set it at 72 rather than 75. Um, now, if I am going to calibrate the reverse acting side of this unit, or probably the cooling side, I would then have to go and switch my air pressures back into my mechanical room, so I put 20 PSI coming into this unit. At 20 PSI, the direct acting screw is out of the picture, and the air signal comes up and is being controlled by this bleed port, but the reverse acting screw, which is right down here, I have to calibrate that the same way, all right? And I would follow the same procedure. So I think what we'll do is we'll turn our supply pressure to 20 pounds, and then we'll come back and finish up this video. <laughs> so listen, for all you guys out there, you probably didn't know we had Kenny Rogers as a customer. Now this is what Kenny's doing. He's giving the music up now. He's working for Johnson Controls. He's rocking and rolling. Is the control industry more fun than singing? Definitely. <laughs> if you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist and Company has a control solution for you.